Creating security inside of your relationship. Well, that's the topic we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you doing, my uplifting life partners? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, the reason this is a very, very powerful topic is we have to come to grips with the fact that most of us are living a life of insecurity. I had, uh, man, I was listening to some, some information and even I had to sit back and just go, it, it was some clarity even for me to realize I have some insecurity because you guys know we, uh, you know, because the way I've talked about cheating, for example, and I'm like one of those that I'm like, if they cheat, it's over, I'm out the door, there's not even a hesitation. And But listening to the conversations really on um, insecurity and looking for it inside of someone else and being at peace within yourself made me come to a realization that those are all insecurities. And why do I say that? Because you're looking for someone else to make you feel whole. And unfortunately, that definition of feeling whole is that they're living according to rules and things that you've put in place. It's like when you're with someone, it's like these, and some of them are unspoken things, but this is how I expect you to be. And as long as you're doing those things, then I continue to stay in a sense of security. But the moment you step outside of that and do something that is, I disagree with, now you've interrupted this bubble, this dream, this, this, this story that I had created. And that's the reason for my disturbance in my life is because, not because of what you did, but because of the fact is it interrupted my thought process. And it's a rough, you guys know I shared uh, the story that I call the nightmare when I said, um, when I was younger, you know, when Terry and I was in the dating stage, I had this dream that I caught her cheating and I woke up instantly and, and my heart was beating fast and my shirt was wet and I, that's, I called her up and I was like, I love you. And from that day on, I was a committed young man. And But what I came to realize, and I mentioned that in the book, is that it wasn't really about Terry even though most people would think that, and that was my first impression is that this was about her, but it was really about me. It was about the fact that why or how could she do this to me? Even though I was out there acting fool, but it's like, how could she do this to me? She crossed the lines of what I felt she should ever do. She should be so loyal to me that this should be something that never occurred. And it interrupted my pattern. And it interrupted my security. And that insecurity, and now I can really look at that and see, that insecurity is what actually caused me to become a committed individual. Not being secure in the relationship, but because of my insecurities within myself and my insecurities that if this did occur, that I would be at peace in my life. That's what caused me to make the shift. And, and folks, I mean, and this is like a recent hit for me that I'm just sitting here going like, whoa, that is, a, that is an insecurity. That's actually, man, because what you're doing is you're not at peace within who you are. And what we're doing is we're looking for that partner to keep that security for us in our lives because we're not secure and we don't feel secure. And it's not about getting it from someone else. It's about us being secure within ourselves. And the way you do that is, again, your, your connection to source, whatever you call source. I'm not here to tell you but whatever that source is, the closer you are to source, the more human beings cannot disturb you. And when you're connected to source, you know. It's like, think about those times in your life 
where you were just like on top of the world. You were just so pumped up and you were just like, yeah, life cannot get any better than this. That's the connection to source. That's when life is, you're actually having some security in your life. Any adjustment away from that emotion, that thought process, it started to create more insecurity. It's like changing the stations we talked about before. Whatever the radio station is that you've tuned into because that plays the songs you like, you're secure, you're singing, you're dancing, you're enjoying life. Somebody touches it or if you accidentally bump it and it changes just a little bit, you go, whoa, interrupted your pattern, interrupted your security of being able to hear the music that you wanted to hear. So you instantly go back and turn, oh, whew, interruption. Folks, that's the same thing that's going on inside of our relationships. Most people. And again, that this is this is this is a hit even for me that I was like most people are spending their life living in a sense of insecurity and walking around convincing themselves that they're secure. I was listening to a young lady uh, talk about you know her husband. She was making the comment, "Is it okay for your your partner to be out at two, three in the morning?" And for me, my initial response is. That's not an issue for me. And, and, and what she said, too, as far as your, uh, your, your partner calls and, and uh, lets you know, and that's just out of respect, you know, to let them know that you're okay and you're safe. You know, if you get ready to go to bed and you know that they're out, call and, and say, um, you know, I'm going to be in a little later. Um, and so that's when you can get at secure when you're not at a point where I'm not even, that stuff is not even disturbing me from that perspective. But I'm secure in who I am that I'm not concerned with what you're doing. The only thing I want to do is, and, and legitimately, I just want to know that you're safe. So do I need to call someone to, to come get you or do I need to come get you? Then you call. I mean something, but you're doing it for that reason, but not because you're concerned on are they doing something they shouldn't be doing. And it's like, that was that's rough because I'm sitting there going, man, yeah, at two o'clock. Because see, for me, it wasn't that they're out that late. It's just my thought process here is how often. Because initially, again, my thought is it can't be something that's a normal routine. Because if you're married, why would a person that's married need to be out that late at night? And I know a lot of you hear me and you're in agreement, like, yeah, because there is no reason. But we have to be secure in ourselves that it doesn't matter what you're doing to interrupt my security. You have to respect the relationship enough yourself to say, I don't want to be out to two or three o'clock in the morning because what am I doing out at two or three? Because that's the reason for me. It was never a question where I ever felt I couldn't stay out. But I was like, but what, what's going on at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning that I want to be out to begin with? And so that's why, for me, it's like if there's exceptions to the rule, like you and your boys are hanging out or the ladies having a night out or whatever, and, and you guys got out there and just start acting crazy, those happen. And that's where I agree and I understand that shouldn't create insecurity within your relationship or you instantly start doubting that your partner's out here doing something because that is a form of insecurity within yourself. But as a partner, I don't see a, a partner being, so I'm still having a little adjustment there, <laughs> of a partner that thinks this should be a normal thing and acceptable behavior. Because again, I guess I am still tying some of my security into that person. But when you can get a total piece, it doesn't matter. It really is. So you guys can tell, I'm, I'm telling you the way it should be. Not necessarily that I've totally made the adjustment myself at this point. Because it is it is even for me to sit back and just go, wow, that man, you're not at peace. And you're not secure in who you are and where you are in your life. Because if you are, it doesn't matter what other people are doing. And that includes your partner. And I'm just like, 
and, and folks, this, this doesn't mean you don't care. It doesn't mean that you treat them uh, disrespect. You, you're going to always, because of the fact that you are at peace at who you, uh, at, at, within yourself. And that's why I've always used the analogy. I tell people when you're full, you know, like if we're talking about being uh, hungry, when you're full, then you're always looking for, to help others because that's when you're in a position to give. And so for me, it's the same thing. When you're totally at peace and you do feel that security within yourself, then you're looking for ways to help your partner feel good. Not that they, they should need it, again, if we're both secure individuals, but you're doing that out of caring. You follow me? Not because I'm doing it because they feel insecure and I need to do it to make them feel secure. Or they're doing things for me because I'm insecure and they're trying to make me feel secure. You guys follow? And that's why I said, so for me, that's why I was like, man, that's deep. Because I I still have stumbled on that 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 comment of if if, if your partner cheated, I've always said, no if, ands, or buts. I'm done. I'm not gonna even try to understand. I'm out. But the reason that's got me now in, in a different conversation is because what it's saying is I've created rules within my relationship that are conditions. And, and that's why I said that was kind of like, whoa. Because, you know, I always talk about conditional love and unconditional love. And I said, there, to me, there is no such thing as unconditional love. I mean, as conditional love. It's all either unconditional or you don't love. And so for me, this is kind of like that thing that is like, so, and again, for me, I wouldn't, I was never going to say, even when I was talking about how it would disturb me because my partner cheated, I still didn't ever say that I wouldn't love them. So that part didn't change because to me, love is, you guys know, I said love is accepting someone just the way they are. But the adjustment is for me to be able to say, but they can't disturb my peace. And I'm like, huh? They can't disturb my peace. I'm like, oh no, it don't disturb some peace around here. And uh, But that adjustment is being able to say, wow. Because for me, it would be an eye opener that if they cross that line, for me to be able to say, wow, I thought I was secure and I'm very insecure because my whole world has been interrupted, disturbed because of your actions, which means my peace, my security was tied to you. Woo! Now, I don't know if you guys got what I just said, but that... That was something I had to sit back and just go, that's, that's, whew. but anyway, so you guys can see, I'm still getting my head around this because I'm still like, no, because it's kind of like, it's supposed to mess you up and it's supposed to disturb you and it's supposed to, and it's because that's kind of what we're cheating is. That's just the way it is. You, and it's like, but that means you have put conditions and again, this is not me giving you guys and telling you that this is the uh, the license to say, well, I'm going out and cheat. This is because now my partner, my happiness shouldn't be tied to them and vice versa. So let's, it's a free fall. That is not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is it disturbs you when it does occur and it causes you to, to your life to be disrupted then that means your security was being tied to them. And that's where you have to stop. That's where your security has to be something within you. And there's nothing the world can do to interrupt that. And it's kind of without me knowing it, that's kind of what I did. Um, what I told you guys for a couple of days with this pandemic and things going on when I first started, I doing a lot of research and a lot, and it made me just get to a very negative place. And, um, and I had to come to grips and rewrite the story on what this meant. And I had to get at peace to, I can't control what's down the line and I can't control what the people that are behind all this are up to or not up to, depending on your thought process. Only thing I can do is be secure and at peace with me and say, 
you know what? I have to work out, walk out this journey in total peace and let the world do what the world is doing. And that is what got me out of bed when I was able to say, and that's when I got back into doing my projects and back to doing my videos and, you know, and that kind of, because I got to the point where I'm like, I have to be at peace. And the way that happens is the closer you get to your source, and I'm not here to tell you who your source should be or what your source is. But the way you know when you're connected to sources, you know those times when you're just pumped and it was like you were on top of the world and it, nothing could get better than this. Life is just incredible at this point. That's when you're fully connected to your source, whatever that source is. Any adjustment, any adjustment away from source or that, that, that feeling, that thought process means you're turning away from your connection to source, it means you're moving away. And the analogy, the easy one to use is like on a radio station. I mean, you have it set to a certain station. You got your music, you're enjoying it, you're on top of the world, and then you hit the station on accident or somebody else just comes and sits in your car, turn the stand, whatever, and you, it's an interruption. That security of being able to know what you were going to get, the music you're going to get, the enjoyment, it got interrupted. And now insecurity stepped in. And you have to get to a point where you're secure. All the, I mean, I don't know if human beings, if we can get to that point, but we can strive to get there. But where you, you, the more you can stay there at least and stay connected, then the fact that the station got changed doesn't hit you. It doesn't interrupt your security, your life. That's why I was using the pandemic and the change of state and all. Because if I'm at peace, none of this interrupts me. And that's when you know a true peace because you're able to say, huh, okay, this it is what it is. And you're able to move, like in the case where I said I made the adjustments, there would have been no adjustments that needed to be made. The same thing when we're talking about the partner cheat. There wouldn't be any adjustments if they cheated for me to adjust emotionally or whatever because of what they did. Because I'm so at peace at who I am and where I am in my connection to source that I'm able to say, wow, that's a decision he or she decided to make in their life. Because remember, I said you can't control anyone else. The only decisions you get to make are the ones for yourself. And so that's, that's a piece that's an incredible <laughs> way to live. And to be able to get there, folks, I, I, I got some work to do. This is not, because I hope you guys understand everything that I share and I teach, it's not that I figured all this out. It is never going to happen. The day that I'm going to figure all this out is the day they probably put dirt on my face. Nobody will ever figure all this out. You're not supposed to. That's the purpose of the journey. But the key is when you can be able to accept and grow with all the new information. And so for me, this was a hit to my thought process. It's like, because again, I, like I told you, if you cross that line from a cheap perspective, I'm done. I'm out to where I'm like, that can't even phase me. That's when you know, because again, that means my security is tied to the actions of someone else. And that is not living free. That is your, your life can never be free when whether you're going to be happy, sad, depressed, cheated upon mentally or any of that. If any of that stuff is going to interrupt your life, you're not secure. You're not at peace. You are not free. And it's like, oh. so folks, you guys <laughs> keep wishing well for me. <laughs> and hopefully you got this point. And that's that we got to get connected to the source. We got to. And, and, and again, you know how close you are to source by are you at the total extreme to where you're on top of the world? You're connected. And the further you get, the worse you feel. And that's because the insecurities are stepping in and you're allowing them 
to control your thought process. And which, of course, as we, you guys know, I've talked about. Those thoughts turn into stories. Those ter stories turns into action. Those actions create our emotions. And folks, you got to understand that process and be able to say, I'm getting reconnected to source because I can't allow anything to interrupt my peace and my freedom. All right. So as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. And remember, whatever you're doing, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. So this one is one that even I will continue for, for a little while now to still keep working and get my fine tuning down. But uh, anyway, I look forward to talking to you guys. Those of you who come on Thursday, I look forward to talking to you next Thursday on Relationship Thursday. And for those of you that were working more on ourselves, which this is kind of working on yourself also, which all this stuff is, they all intertwine because um, relationship with yourself is a relationship. So, but for those that look for Self Love Monday, I look forward to talking to you on Monday. Again, I'll talk to you guys soon. Enjoy the journey. Have fun and connect to source. Get secure. That way the world and all the things they're doing will never, ever interrupt your peace and you can truly be free. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.